Hello everyone, today I will try to guess how Chinese vape mode working But sorry, the firmware itself, I have been changed with Artifog firmware So maybe there is something different about power switch sequence and the timing compared to original firmware This mode have synchronous bug boost converter with additional MOSFET for protection and have synchronous bug converter USB Type-C charging chips it's contain STM32 F072 so we can change firmware with Artifox. In the PCB we have USB type C, a some transistor, diode, diode protection for input, uh, this LDO for microcontroller and other. We have MT we have empty pad for uh EPROM. Mm, we have some transistor for uh, uh, driving LED backlight for LCD. This transistor for additional MOSFET protection. In here we have synchronous MOSFET driver. This chip, for, this chip for bus converter. And this transistor for uh, enabling this bus converter. And here we have MOSFET for boost converter high side and low side and this little tiny is for op amp at bottom PCB we have resistor for current limiting USB port this chip is synchronous bug converter for charging circuit we have inductor and sun resistor for current detection when charging and here we have main microcontroller unit this is STM32 F072 we have already changed with Artifog firmware and here we have additional uh, protection MOSFET this is the input capacitor and this two MOSFET is for synchronous bug converter this is low side and this is high side and we have big inductor here we have a sun resistor and this three output capacitor and this capacitor for stability when reading uh, this sun resistor the board itself have three voltage input the first come from 5 volt usb port commonly the mod using this voltage for start up the microcontroller besides that they can using this voltage to write program into microcontroller for the first time. It's protected by feeding from other power input and polarity protection by some diode. And protected by resistor in case of return. Here we have three diode and this diode will protect USB port. And this resistor behind the USB port. Second, the voltage coming from 11 volt boost converter for mainly driving the MOSFET. In here it's not synchronous bus converter because we don't need that they only use some diode diode voltage drop will not affect too much in high voltage low here but still single chip bus converter today is cheap and reduce the external component I have some question why not 12 volt why it's 11 volt I think maybe for efficiency the MOSFET only need 10 volt to saturate Another component using low voltage dropout to 3.3 volt in here. That can be inefficient if voltage gap too wide. The energy will lose to heat in the LDO. This bus converter take over other power input. When it's turned on, for some component that need stable input or high voltage, the output voltage protected back feeding from other power input and polarity protection by some diode in here. This boost converter itself have main input voltage from USB or battery. And this boost converter can make wind noise when other input voltage fluctuate. And the last of course from battery and or USB charging chips. It's protected back feeding from other power input and polarity protection by, by some diode. The diode in is here.
there are safety features like charging current control, but there are no fuse in case something sorted. If the main power switcher fail, short circuit, they have protection MOSFET, but other tiny component doesn't have the protection. Now let's go to other topic. This board have eight transistor, but it's grouped into four only for switching something. There have some possibility why they need to transistor for switch. First, they use NPN and PNP BGT for switching something. Second, they using BGT to drive the MOSFET for switching something. So far that possibility I can think. The first group transistor is here. Second, third, and fourth. Fourth, from the top, this transistor using for enabling the 11 volt bus converter. I don't know why they need it, because I guess there are enabling pin on bus converter chip. That doesn't need additional transistor to drive with logic level voltage. In artifact firmware, this bus converter enable when microcontroller in active mode. Uh, I mean, it's not in sleep mode. When active, the frequency is about two megahertz. And the output voltage is about 11 volt. Okay, the second is for driving LED backlight LCD. The location is here. Now we want to measure the frequency due to cycle and voltage. Now we are ready to attach the LCD. Let's turn on the mode. Okay. We already set the brightness about 50%. And the frequency for the LD backlight it's about 100 hertz. Let's try to change the brightness. Okay, to about 20%. At 20%, we still have 100 hertz for driving the LED backlight. It's maybe interference to my multimeter. Now let's check the duty cycle when the brightness is 20%. At 20%, the duty cycle is about 78%. Now let's, choose, let's set to 50%. At 50% we have, oops, 90% duty cycle. Let's try to 100 oops at 100% my multimeter can measure the duty cycle now at 100% brightness uh, let's see the voltage before resistor current limiting uh, 
and the voltage is about 3.3 volts so the the LED backlight is driving by LDO now the voltage after resistor current limiting it's about 2.6 volt okay the third is for enabling additional MOSFET protection in RTFOX firmware this additional protection MOSFET enable when microcontroller in active mode uh, I mean in not not in sleep mode just like bus converter I don't know if there are another possibility like when source circuit or over current the location is here okay the MOSFET is uh, below the two transistor above the last is for enabling charging circuit uh, the location is here below the uh, charging chips again i don't know why they need another transistor because i guess there are enable pin on charging chips i think the charging chip itself is smart can be always turned on they will cut off itself if needed enable pin should be optional option by the way this charging circuit is efficient because synchronous back converter i don't know they can maximize charging current by existing current sense resistor in here okay now i will try to measure every input and output capacitor value the input capacitor is about Okay, 90 microfarad, and output capacitor is about 235 micro microfarad. Yeah, around it. Okay, for the input we have three capacitor, and the output we have uh, five capacitor. Two in here, and the back is one. Uh, after the sun resistor, they have two capacitor for stability: the small one and the big one. Next the input capacitor charging the location is here i think Okay, my multimeter can read it. Skip. The output capacitor charging is about eighty microfarad. and the input capacitor LDO okay my multimeter can read it skip and the output capacitor LDO is about 8 10 microfarad 
the less I will try to measure the inductor size. Okay, the inductor size is about uh, 12.5 mm and the height it's about 3.5 mm. There are op amp for measuring output current and the tech coil resistance in here to amplify signal to amplify the voltage from sun resistor. There are anti there are anti thermistor resistor for measuring the PCB temperature, but I don't know the location. Maybe in here, 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 here. <laughs> Finally, let's see main switcher frequency if we can. Okay. Try to fire up. Okay, the main switcher frequency is about 480 kilohertz it's clearly and we can measure the duty cycle it's about 27 28 percent at one watt for the one ohm coil resistance and my power supply jumping up and down when the display is turned on maybe because he's trying to read the wire resistance Okay, thank you everyone for watching. I hope you learned something new from this. If you have questions, you can drop comment below. Follow my social media and visit my website for something interesting. Bye.